I was talking with my mother on the phone in September, and uh, she'd been doing some back-to-school shopping for my 17-year-old nephew. Um, she said she was looking for a sturdy backpack, and uh, she said he doesn't have a locker. He doesn't take a locker. That struck me as surprising. I said, "Why not?" And she said, "Well, you know." The bullies would know where to find him. Had to get him a new one last year because someone threw it down a stairwell and it burst open. So that was kind of a reminder of what the state of schools are today. And uh, just a week ago, Egal put out a national climate survey on schools, in which we see, as you see here. Their、uh, sense that the hostile school climate is widespread. I'm not sure if my 17-year-old nephew is gay, but he is a little bit small, a little bit cute, and a little bit shy. We're living in an unprecedented time. It seems there are sexual images and options and possibilities are more accessible than ever before. Millions of people are experimenting with their lives as never before, and yet. Intense hostilities over sexuality are present, you know, in, as never before. Anti-gay marriage that we see in the media,、uh, global church scandals,、um, international child porn. This is all the clash and clatter that we're living in in these times.、Uh, what has been called by、uh, one investigator as one of the most charged battlegrounds of the 21st century. So we wanted to have a look at bullying in sex. Now, the survey that we did in 2010,、um, <clears throat> and、uh, many of you might have been able to get the、uh, report that we have out in the table there. Sex Now was originally conducted as a feasibility study for a future national. Uh, survey of gay men's health determinants. In fact, the one that we are running now, that's currently recruiting,、uh, we're at just under 5,000 in that recruitment right now, and we're shooting for as many as we had last year. This survey, 2010, had nearly 8,000、uh, men in it.、Um, there's a, we actually had more men than we're showing here, but some people、um, had to be、uh, eliminated. Um, this recruitment was really an unexpected success. We really didn't expect 8,000 men in, in our feasibility study, but、uh, part of our feasibility study was to see if men would actually answer a survey on the internet and uh, uh, spend 20 minutes of their lives doing this. And so we're really happy that 8,000 did that. We've learned a tremendous amount from this, and we've been modeling the data for a year now. And、uh, it takes an enormous amount of work to do this.、Um, the mean sample age was a little older than we usually get、uh, in in the past in sex now surveys.、Um, this one shows that、uh, under 30、uh, was somewhere just under 20%. And accounts for 1,523 men under 30. When we look at bullying,、uh, is described in the literature as verbal and physical violence. And in the survey, we asked, "Have you ever experienced anti-gay violence, verbal, physical, or both?" These results show that a large proportion of the sample reported bullying somewhere in their life. We're looking at lifetime bullying here. So, accounting for 42% of the 8,000 we studied, you might say that this evidence is showing that the majority, 58%, have not suffered direct bullying. And,、uh, but we'll look at that a little deeper as we go on. And we know of all kinds of Uh, soft homophobia that exists that isn't really about bullying or isn't direct confrontation that exists, such as we heard this morning about、uh, minority stress. 
So uh, we were able to break down bullying and see that most of it's verbal um, and about 38% in our data at least is uh, physical and verbal. Um, alongside of bullying, we looked at uh, another other, a number of potential indicators of marginalization, uh, suicidal thoughts and acts, uh, the extent of sadness and loneliness, we're looking at greater than 25%. And uh, since we're looking at lifetime reports, these lines are actually showing us historic trends. If you reverse all of this, you would get the impression that bullying has actually increased in the schools and certainly uh, we, we tend to notice that from what is being said to us anecdotally and of course from uh, surveys such as EGALS. So this is a regression looking at uh, bullied against not bullied. Uh, these are crude um, odds ratios, they're not in a model, we're not testing um, each against the other, we're just looking at two groups here, bullied and not bullied. And what this is telling us is that mental health care amongst the bullied is 2.6 times more than the not bullied. Suicidal, 3.4 times. Depression care, 2.5. And on we go. Career impacted, very interesting. Five times the likelihood of those who were bullied against those who were not bullied have had some kind of career impact somewhere in their lives. Unwanted sex, substance care, on it goes. But you get the impression here that bullying has a tremendous effect on uh, mental health, even from our crude indicators uh, that we've seen in this, in this survey. So because career impact um, <laughs> seems so large, we wanted to look at, um, at career impact and look at the career impacted against those who've had no impact in their career. And we see that when you look at it this way, 73% of the career impacted have had bullying in their lives. <clears throat> so it accounts for an awful lot of impact. But you'd have to ask why and what's happening here. Um, we also see that uh, we, we had some other measures like um, uh, sensitivity to homophobic news, homo uh, homo negative news. Again, looking at suicidality, um, we're showing that those who've had career impact because of their sexuality, 70% uh, of those are showing some form of suicidality. Again, mental health care up there, um, sadness and depression care all up there. So our main interest in undertaking the national survey um, was uh, to investigate gay men's health determinants in this population. Research on determinants is normally conducted with a whole population samples where subpopulations are compared for equity. And it, what a whole population sample means is that you have to have everybody eligible for the survey. We can't do that, and we don't have such a survey. Um, this is uh, an internet survey, and so there are limitations to what we can expect. And, um, but the fact is that we have a large number to look at. Uh, to give you an example for comparison, uh, David Brennan and his team at U of T uh, have done an analysis of the Canadian Community Health Survey that Chris just mentioned to conduct equity analysis between gay, bisexual, and heterosexual men. But in that sample, they're, they're uh, comparing 536 gay men, 300 bisexual men, against 49,000 heterosexual men. So in our survey, what we're going to do is to study uh, gay men against MSM, though that group that we've called um, having sex with men but don't identify as gay. And the way that we've cut that out of this survey is that we've looked for those men 
who, um, for their presence or abs absence of women in their uh, primary relationships. So MSM in this case is not an identity category that we're looking at here, but whether they're partnered or married with um, women compared to gay men. And that accounts for 19% of the sample, so we're looking at the experience of almost 50, uh, 1,500 men. We've been working for this data, with this data for a year now, as I said, um, and uh, this is what we've seen, is that um, compared to gay men, um, MSM, you see there are nearly 50% of gay men have been bullied in this sample and only about 11% of MSM. That makes gay men eight times more likely to have been bullied in this sample than MSM. And then you see as well what happens as a result of the uh, of mental health impact that we're getting about twice the mental health factor. Uh, further analysis that we would, don't want to show here right at this point just for, for brevity has shown that uh, we see in MSM also some uh, telltale signs of determinants that in our sample MSM also had um, increased income and living standards, uh, they were insulated from marginalization and had improved mental and sexual health outcomes. So. You have to wonder, again, what are we looking at? Um, these findings have, uh, have fascinated us. Um, we've been, as I say, we've been modeling these data for quite a while now, and uh, we're still working on that and not at a stage where we can actually show it. Um, but what we do have is qualitative uh, research that's in the literature and uh, this is some of the observations we've seen. Again, uh, paradoxically, bullying research commonly neglects sexual orientation and yet LGBT overrepresented amongst those bullied. It's kind of interesting. Um, and we also have to see that there are um, intersecting oppressions that we're, we're working with here that are kind of uh, in our study are concealed um, and yet we know that they're there when we look at the data uh, very closely. Uh, this study done in Toronto was very helpful for interpreting this, um, our, our data and uh, give us some context for understanding these numbers. Their um, research showed that bullying was actually triggered by gender norm transgressions, not particularly by sexual orientation. In fact, it worked kind of this way, and it did for Jamie Hubley. Jamie Hubley chose figure skating in grade seven sports rather than hockey, and that was seen to have been what triggered the rest of his trajectory. And as I said, my 17-year-old nephew, one of the soft, shy, smart targets. Who knows what his sexuality is, but he's called a faggot. Um, all of these things uh, in this research suggest that um, these, um, uh, what's happening with gender norm transgressions is that um, though anyone who shows any kind of insufficient commitment to their masculinity is going to get targeted. And so we can't really see that sexual orientation is the only leaven of bullying. There's uh, gender as well, and gender seems to be paying, playing a very important role. Um, we also found in this literature some very interesting things. What this literature is saying is that um, men particularly use um, health behaviors as a way of negotiating their, their place on the ma masculinity hierarchy. So smoking uh, was used, for example, this morning. It's another case where uh, men who smoke um, are essentially trying to assert their masculinity, and there are so many behaviors like driving fast and uh, um, drinking a lot. Um, these um, tend to be ways, in a sense, of finding your place on the, uh, on the masculine hierarchy by 
doing something to show that somebody is below you. And that seems to be one of the origins of bullying. For practice implications, I wanted to leave this to Rick Mercer, and I need to do just a little bit of trickery here to, uh, to be able to do that for you. Every year in this country, 300 kids take their own lives. It is a mind-boggling number. And this past week, one of those kids was Jamie Hubley. He was 15, he was depressed, and he happened to be gay. And because this is 2011, we just don't read about a kid like Jamie, we can Google him. And then the next thing you know, you're sitting at home watching his videos on YouTube. And he was gay, all right. He was a great, big, goofy, gay kid singing Lady Gaga on the internet. And as an adult, you look at that and you go, you know what? That kid's going places. But for some reason, some kids, they looked at that and they attacked. And now he's gone. And because this story is all too familiar, we know exactly what's going to happen next. Grief counselors will go into the school as they should. But what about the old-fashioned assembly? You know, where the cops show up and there's hell to pay. And they find out who's responsible. You know, like when the lunchroom is vandalized. Because the kids who bullied this boy, they know who they are. And more importantly, other kids know who they are. It's no longer good enough for us to tell kids who are different that it's going to get better. We have to make it better now. That's every single one of us, every teacher, every student, Every adult has to step up to the plate, and that's gay adults too, because I know gay cops, soldiers, athletes, cabinet ministers, a lot of us do, but the problem is, adults, we don't need role models. Kids do. So if you're gay and you're in public life, I'm sorry, you don't have to run around with a pride flag and bore the hell out of everyone, but you can't be invisible, not anymore. 300 kids is 300 too many. I couldn't say it like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, here we are. Um, you know, uh, I, just another plug for the survey. We've put an awful lot of energy into uh, studying these relationships in the, uh, in the next survey and uh, working um, particularly on the career impact. We're, we're looking at the workplace and people's uh, career experience of uh, homophobia, heterosexism, homonegativity and all, and uh, again, hoping for another really good turnout. As I say, uh, we're sitting somewhere just below 5,000 now. We'd at least like to do as well as we did last time, and we'll have to December 31st. So thanks again.